Right, um, here we are in the second of this series um, that I've just started looking at models that I've either built, completely finished building from a kit or that I've um, finished designing. Um, in the previous um, uh, episode, we looked at um, the, the first model I built, which was the Bagley Jury from Narrow Planet, which was a, a little diesel uh, locomotive. And I said at the end that we'd look at a, a steam locomotive. So here we are. Um, this is another um, 009 gauge model, so that's uh, four millimeter to the foot scale, running on nine millimeter uh, gauge track. Uh, this one, as you can see, is for a, a little steam train. It's um, Alice Class uh, Quarry Hunslet from a kit by Brian Madge. Um, specifically, the kit was based on Dorothea, uh, which is preserved at the Launceston um, Steel Railway in Cornwall. Uh, I'll put a link to the to the railway's page about the loco in the in the description. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a tiny little uh, a little model. Um, Quite a bit more complicated than the the previous model I built, um, but not um, not a not a not a ridiculous step up in, in complexity, uh, and that's because if you turn it over, um, you'll see that the the actual driven chassis is this three D printed uh, block, and that came pre assembled. Brian um, assembled these by hand uh, when putting the kits together, so it came with the block, uh, the wheels, axles, gears, um, pulley. Uh, for the lay shaft all fitted um, before it arrived um, so I had to hit if I had to fit the pickups so that they would get power and I had to fit all the um, all the all the motion all the all the connecting rods and fly cranks and things but it arrived essentially with something that when you were, when you put the motor on and applied power wheels would turn so again a bit like the the previous kit um, I wasn't building up um, the the kind of the, the kind of power part I was building mostly the body shell um, with this added complexity of uh, of the of the of the motion on the outside um, and actually building the body shell itself uh, wasn't ridiculously complicated so um, it's more complicated than the previous one there's no uh, 3d printed parts in, in here so there is some the the foot plate and buffer beams are a, an etched piece um, that folds down at the ends um, and then the the frames are, are soldered in place. Um, you have to obviously make sure that's all nice and square, otherwise the wheels won't fit properly. Uh, but the body, the top, the kind of top part of the body, um, the saddle tank, the smoke box, uh, were nice kind of um, cast metal parts. Um, so they were nice and nice and easy to put together. The cab is made up of etches, so there's a kind of internal uh, shell that's then got. Um, etched overlays put on the top and that was kind of a bit more complicated to build the instructions suggest you can either solder um, or super glue I chickened out and went for the super glue um, just trying to get the the overlays on square I decided um, super glue would be easier than than soldering but I did solder up um, some of the frame um, frame details um, and yeah it went together went together reasonably straightforward and say the most complicated thing uh, was getting um, all this motion fitted um, there are some videos already on the channel as a playlist that I'll link to um, that shows me kind of building this up um, and yeah they're, they're getting the, the motion right was the hardest part um, I mean you have to get all four wheels on with the fly cranks in exactly the right position so that the as they all rotate everything moves and nothing jams up um, also there's not exactly lots of clearance going on here so when the, the cross head here slides along the slide bars it has to clear uh, the fly crank and the connecting rod on the the front front axle. And there's very very little space. So once you fitted the the nut that holds the connecting rod onto the fly crank, you have to fight it really really far, thin so that it it can 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 pass. As you can see, I didn't actually file the rear ones. By the time I got it all kind of working nicely, I didn't really want to mess with it much further. So um, I left these. They're they're a little long. They could do with being. Uh, file flat but from a sensible viewing distance you don't really notice that uh, and it stopped me um, stopped me messing it up um, but yeah it was really it was a really nice little model to build as I say it was a it was a step up um, from the the diesel uh, the bag, uh, Bagley Jury from Narrow Planet um, into something that was a was a, was a was a bit different as a steam steam engine but it involved some soldering um, fitting the the motion and figuring out how to quarter the wheels so everything worked. Um, so it was a nice, it was a nice step up in what I had to do. So a nice, a nice effort of, of things to learn. Um, things that went right, wrong that I changed. Um, I filled in under the, 
under the tank, under the saddle tank, so you can't actually see the, the motion stuff. I put some plastic card in here and painted it black, so on the real thing you would be able to see kind of through a bit further underneath. Um, but in here I've just blacked it out so you can't see the motor and stuff. Um, what else did I do? Oh, right, yeah, so I fitted a whistle that I don't think was in the original kit. I think the whistle comes from a 3mm uh, scale um, supplier, so it's not quite the full size of a of one in this in this scale uh, from a standard gauge supplier. Um, I drilled holes in the buffer beam to take Greenwich couplings, which weren't part of the original original kit but I think most of the rest of what you can see is um, is all the kit all the detail in the cab which you can see is all is all part of the original kit it's really really nice and I'd say it's um it's a shame these are no longer available but Brian would make them up in in small batches um, but not long after I, I managed to get hold of this one they became quite difficult to get hold of and he no longer no longer makes them um, so yes, I'm really happy happy that it's available. Um, I did have to paint it twice. Um, I messed up the the glossy red top coat. Um, another disaster with um, masking tape. I've now invested in some better masking tape since these disasters. Um, so that was that was a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. I had to uh, in this in this case rather than rusting it, I stripped it right back and, and repainted, and it's come out nice on a second on a second go. Um, obviously, there was quite a lot of effort went into building painting this um, you can now just buy them pretty much um, off the shelf as ready to run models back when um, now produce um, specifically Dorothea um, among other quarry hunslets I'll put a picture up on the screen in a second um, as ready to run items uh, the Dorothea one I think comes in the it's in a, a green livery um, that it's currently in at the in its preserved state uh, but they do a bunch of a bunch of other other liveries and other um, versions of the of the, the quarry hunslet as well. I think they do an Alice and a Britomart, uh, among others. Um, so if you do want a tiny little, gorgeous little quarry hunslet, um, then yeah, as I say, unfortunately you can't buy this kit anymore. But you can go um, you can go buy one from from Batman if you want one. Um, I think there's something special about having having built this from a kit um, that I wouldn't get from uh, from buying one. But um, I think that's the only only real option at the moment um, if you want one. I don't think there's anybody else. Uh, doing a kit in four millimeter scale, um, and they're a lovely little look. I mean, they're obviously kind of very um, prototypical for North Wales, um, and a lot of uh, narrow gauge lines in the UK have, have had a quarry hunslet or a visiting quarry hunslet at least. Um, so lots of people will have will have seen them. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the second ever locomotive model I built. Um, again, really really impressed with how it came out. Really happy with it. Um, as I said, a lot of that's down to the really well designed kit again uh, really um, yeah it's uh, again making sure that the motion um, and all the motor and gears was easy to easy to I mean just use in this case but I could see how it was kind of put together as well which was which was nice um, and as you'll see that leads into some of the kits I've designed um, I've been working on since um, but we'll look at those in a in another episode for today we'll uh, let's finish with another another nice little shot of the Quarry Hunslet, um, trying to pick out some of the details. Again, works plates and the nameplate are from, um, were done by Narrow Planet, um, now known as Light Railway Stars. Um, these were kind of custom etched, um, so they've got proper Hunslet works plate, uh, nice little name, nameplates. Uh, yeah, really happy with that.